as you all know, calcium is not only a problem for the patient, also for the operator. Uh, now we have many tools for dealing with the calcium, but the problem is choosing the correct tool for the given lesion. So to help us with that, we have many imaging modalities. We have to utilize whatever is available to us at that point of time to, to the fullest. Coming to angiography, if there is an angiography has a high specificity for calcium. So if there is a calcium, uh, if there is severe calcium, then usually the patient will require a uh, debulking. If there is moderate, we may be able to get away with uh, without debulking. To decide whether uh, moderate calcium lesions require debulking or not, we, we may have to do an intracoronary imaging. There are three steps for doing an uh, intracoronary imaging. That is uh, pre-lesion preparation where we assess the calcium morphology as well as the severity to, to decide on debulking modality and post-lesion preparation to see if the lesion debulking is adequate or not and finally for stent optimization. There are various IVS and OCT criteria. I'll uh, touch upon the IVS criteria. If the calcium arc is more than 270 degree for 5 millimeters of the vessel, uh, one point is given. If the arc is more than 360, I mean, arc is 360, one point, nodule, one point. And if the vessel diameter is less than 3.5, another point is given. If the patient has uh, three or four points, then the risk of under expansion is very high and the patient requires an uh, debulking. Similarly, OCT also has a criteria where the arc is given two points. Thickness one point and length one point. Again, similarly, three or four requires atherectomy. This is a simplified algorithm for deciding on debulking modality. This is a very simple uh, algorithm. If there is a decalcium, we may be able to get away with the cutting scoring on NC volume. If there is a superficial calcium, then we may have to do an imaging to de decide whether debulking is required or not. If the score is more than two, either the OCT or the IVS score is more than two, that is three or four, then we may require debulking. The first choice is, is IVL because it's easily, uh, it's quite simple. But if the IVL catheter is not crossing, then we may have to go for rotablation or orbital arthrectomy. Similarly, for a calcific nodule, the best option would be an orbital arthrectomy. Also, rotational arthrectomy can be done if the wire bias is favorable. I'll be showing a couple of example case examples. This is a 74-year-old female who presented with STEMI inferior wall MI. Uh, sorry, it's a non ST elevation MI with the heart failure with re reduced ejection fraction. This is the angiogram. We can see a nodule sitting at the ostium of the LMCA and heavily calcified a lady with a critical stenosis at the middle lady just at the, at the bend. This is the fluoroscopic image where we can see a nodule sitting at the ostium, a very tight calcific lesion just across the bend. These lesions are notorious. If you do rotational atherectomy, there is a very, very high chance that the burr might get stuck. So an ideal uh, modality for this uh, lesion would be an orbital atherectomy. We tried IVS, but it was not crossing. You can see the nodule of the austral LMC and there is significant calcium in the uh, austral LMC as well as the austral LAD. This is, uh, this is orbital atherectomy where we can see slow, very slow advancement of the burr across the bend. The bird got uh, stuck a couple of times, but we, we were able to gradually pull it back by reverse ablation. And uh, the distal part was ablated at uh, 80k RPM and the, the osteal uh, LMC part was ablated at 110k RPM, followed by preparation with uh, cutting balloon and NC balloon. Here we can see the IVS pictures. Uh, there is a clear-cut crack uh, as well as uh, nice shaving of the nodule in the LMC, as well as uh, significant luminal gain in the proximal part of the LAD. Uh, Right at the bend, we can see a crater which is formed in the calcified region with a nice reverberation artifacts denoting that is a significant debulking has, has taken place. And finally, stenting was done with the help of guideliner with very good results. The post-IVS results were excellent. Uh, briefly, a second case. Uh, this is a 78-year-old female who presented with STEMI. Looks like a juicy, simple lesion, but uh, nothing was crossing. Not even a CTO balloon was crossing with the help of guideliner. So rota uh, rotational atherectomy was done. But again, after rotational atherectomy, the NC balloon was not opening. There was a significant dog burning. And this is the IVS image, which uh, after rota, we can see a significant 360 degree calcium despite rota. So had to do IVL. So combining modalities uh, helps us tackle such complex lesions. And this is the final results. Thank you.